Hello, we are in the third edition of the shadow topic in Women Matters. And this time we want to talk about the nicer part of the shadow, the golden shadow, the parts of ourselves which we don't know, but if we discover them would help us a great deal. So before we start with the topic, we do as always the check-in. I check in, it's in Italy and we are still in September and it's cold and it's really unusual. And I see, Hanely, I give over to you. You are happy because you are in spring <laughs> <laughs> blouses. <laughs> Yes, um, I'm really happy because it's spring. I love spring and I love summers particularly. And um, I'm in Johannesburg and I'm Hanali and I'm really looking forward to also dipping into the golden shadow. I'm handing over to Monia. Well, as you can see, I'm also in Kashmir <laughs> and it's cold in Vienna. And I'm very much looking forward to hearing about golden shadows. I, I just try to find, but yeah, that's, uh, I'm very interested in your golden shadows. And I give over to Christine. Good morning, everybody. I'm in, I am in Carlsbad, California. Um, had a little bit of a scare this past week. Our housekeeper was hospitalized with COVID. So of course that made us nervous because she's been in our house uh, every week. Um, but um, thankfully Tom and I are okay. I think her husband is also okay. Um, he also comes with her to clean our house and I don't believe he got ill, so that's a good thing. But she is out of the hospital. She only was there one day, thankfully. Um, so it's interesting. We have no contact tracing. Nobody has ever contacted me. No health officials have ever asked or notified us in, in any way. So you can tell things are not exactly well organized here. But uh, thankfully, we've got like two more days of the 14 day quarantine that you're supposed to do. So we've got two more days to go and then uh, we'll be out of the woods. So. That's me for today. And how about you, uh, Gertrude? Gertrude living in Germany, right in the middle, north of Frankfurt. And um, yeah, I'm freezing. <laughs> it was like a flip, you know, from 20 something degrees to 12 or so. And um, yeah, I'm kind of uh, nervous a little bit tomorrow. I will have a, my first seminar to lead in person. <laughs> so that resonates with you. And I know two people that came down with COVID online, but um, so yeah, somehow it's coming closer. Beatrice. Hello, good morning, good evening. <laughs> um, we're in San Diego, California. We're in La Mesa specifically. Um, as I said before, my mother will join in about 30 minutes. She's tap dancing in the living room. Um, it's the happiest I ever see her is when she's tap dancing. <laughs> it was something she uh, she did when she was a child and then had to give up for a long time and then um, reignited the spark. Um, I don't know, maybe like six years ago or seven years ago. Um, so, um, and she usually can only do it when she goes to New York, but now because of Zoom, um, she can do it here. And Alfred bought her a tap board and new tap shoes. So now she is able to do it here. So anyway, <laughs> um, my big news is I passed my master's thesis defense um, since I last saw everyone. <laughs> so I officially have a master's degree now. Um, and it's the weather is lovely here at the moment, but Alfred just told me this morning that the next three days we're going to be getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And actually on Wednesday, it'll be 105 uh, or on Thursday. So um, I'm not excited about that. Um, 
I know in New York, it's very beautiful and I'm missing the fall weather there, but wonderful to be here and excited about the golden shadow. Thank you, Beatrice. You can send us a little bit of the call of the warm weather into our court. <laughs> yeah. We would be happy. We are all the court guys, girls are all for me in the same line here you know? <laughs> on the screen. Okay, so let's go to the golden shadow. Uh, the question is, where do you hide it? What do you think could be a golden shadow of yourself? The quality, a quality which you haven't explored, which you might have intuited that you have, but you haven't, or you were too shy, or you thought, uh, no, something like that. Let, let's explore that. Where could that be? It just crossed my mind. Tap dancing probably is not a golden shadow of me. <laughs> it's, it's just an yeah, I, okay, I just came up, sorry. For me, the first, the first um, idea that came up was when I look at other people and, and uh, I'm jealous or admire that with somebody else and uh, don't see it with me. I think that's the first, the first uh, space I would look. <laughs> so that's, that came up to my mind. And I think your question is really interesting. Where is it? <laughs> Where do you hide it? I, I, they, I have to ponder on that. Hello, Martini. We see you, and hopefully, we can hear you too. Can you hear us? Yeah, we, we let, let her still until she has figured that out. I have a little bit of an idea of why, where my golden shadow, one golden shadow at least, could be, because at a certain point, I I helped. Um, a student, a singing student, to do her exam, and she had to do um, a duet. So I, I, I sang with her the duet on the stage, and I really felt really, really good, you know. And I thought, and I was also free in that time because it was not about me; it was about her, <laughs> so I could be free. And I thought, I, I am really good in in acting. I could have. I would love to do that, but I never, it's always, you know, this bit shy and, you know, I cannot do it and, you know, things like that. But there could be a, a place for it. Hello, Martini, can you hear us? Uh, she doesn't re react, so we, we, we just continue, okay? I'm okay. Do you want to check in, Martini? Hello. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that I'm too late. Mm -hmm. um, my technique is not perfect uh, as well, but I love to participate and excuse me for the complications. Mm -hmm. I'm from Austria mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to all of you. Okay, thank you. We are talking about the golden shadow, about the qualities we have hidden somewhere back inside of us and we haven't developed. Uh, and so the question was, what might be something which you are drawn to, but you have never developed because either you thought you are not good enough or something like that. So I give over to who wants to speak next. Well, your, your comment, Heidi, made me think of teaching, because I think that that's something that I've had the opportunity to, to do very little, 
And I think it's something that people have often encouraged me to think about as a, as a career path. Um, but I've always been a little shy and afraid about it. And I think it's especially because it's the kind of, it's the kind of thing that you have to learn by doing. So it feels very, I mean, everything, you know, everything requires vulnerability and failure to learn, to learn and grow and whatever that skill set is. But I think with teaching, you have to do it in front of people. You have to fail in front of people <laughs> before you learn, learn what, how it works. And that has always been very intimidating. Um, and then I think I have, I don't know if this counts as golden shadows. I think, um, I mean, I share this with my mother as well, that we both have a hard time acknowledging and accepting and loving the positive selves, parts of ourselves that we, it's not until somebody else points it out that we say, oh, oh, I guess that's right. You know, or it's very hard for us to see, see the strengths that we have. Um, so that's something it's maybe golden shadow adjacent. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's things that I think if I really thought about it and gave myself the time and compassion, I could identify them and, and I know what they are, but most of the time I don't realize that I have those strengths. I just want to uh, comment on that because you are bringing up a thing which seems to me uh, very characteristic of, of uh, women in our cultures, no? that we don't really realize or want to acknowledge our good sides, but we are so critical, you know. I thought it's only Germans, but you are half German, half Austrian, so. <laughs> okay, I give over to who wants to. Um, I would say I would have liked to have been more of an activist during my life. Um, I think I've held myself back and, and still hold myself back in that regard. I don't know if it's because of something I feel I'm lacking as much as um, in my mind, I'd like to make that a priority, but in reality, when I'm choosing day-to-day -day things, it's it's not a priority. So, uh, I I think it's a matter of not wanting to stick my neck out too much, not wanting to be too visible, perhaps, um, uh, not wanting to be seen in a way that I don't have control over. Uh, so it's, it's probably along those lines of being self-conscious as opposed to not, I don't think that I necessarily don't have the capacity to be more of an activist and, and do more things uh, uh, for the sake of uh, others or, or human rights. But uh, I don't know, the people that I admired the most are probably people that have spent a lifetime uh, doing that. There's a golden shadow behind you, <laughs> Christine. <laughs> really, Look, yeah. It's... I think for me, it's it's a combination of at least two or three things. It's not just one specific role or capacity or ability. Um, there is the singer part of me. I was singing and dancing since I was very little. And then in my adult life, I was still dancing, but not on the stage. Um, and I uh, sort of let the singing back behind when life started happening. But in my life, in my more recent adult life, I'm always built into leadership positions. And I'm always running away from it. And 
like you said, Christine, I don't know if it's a matter of worthiness or you know, you're running away from it, but <clears throat> it's continuously coming on my path, the request to, to stand up and to lead, but in a feminine way, not in a masculine way. Um, and then there's a the teacher part as well that I'm pulled into, and, I, and I, since I was very young, I believed I was not a good teacher because I'm too impatient. And, and then I'm just told by others that I'm actually a very good teacher. So for me, it's just a combination of all of these. I think another place where this shows up is um, I am a performer. <laughs> that much I can say, not not in the shadows, but um, there's something about not believing. Yeah, it's again the not believing that I'm good enough. That I I'm very bad at promoting my work. I'm very bad at promoting myself. I'm very bad at um, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I've been doing recently, and I will send out the email the day before because up until that point I don't believe that I'm actually going to get it you know get it done and then of course nobody comes because they got one day's notice um so that that's an interesting um and I think part of it is because it's the way that I, I I'm very jealous of people who are meticulous and plan ahead and are really prepared way ahead of time for projects and um both of my parents were like this and i'm like this so there's you know there's no hope but we all were people who um you know think about things a lot and are kind of you know it's percolating everything's percolating and then there's a crunch moment right before whenever the thing is going to happen that the work gets produced and it always comes together because we've been thinking about it for so long that once we actually start to write down or build or in my case choreograph or whatever um we already know where the pieces are supposed to be because we've been thinking about it for so long but there's not a lot of note taking or planning or you know and and even though it happens every single time i never trust that i'll pull it off the next time because there's there's this fear that there's one one time I'm gonna you know try to you know, do this process and it's all gonna fall apart, <laughs> and I don't want people to see me fail. So then I don't announce my work to people. So I don't know. It's a it's a not a good cycle, and especially as an artist and as a performer and as someone who is trying to have a career that is self driven, um, I have to get better at promoting myself and promoting myself with like the faith of the future <laughs> that I'll I will deliver and I will show up when the time comes um that's resonating with me <laughs> quite a bit yeah thanks for the courage to say that <laughs> I was wondering where the dark shadow begins and or ends and the golden shadow begins so i um i was thinking when i was four or five i don't know uh my parents put me in front of the whole the whole <laughs> relative gang um and i had to sing something and and i i did call yeah like a four-year-old and then I forgot the text or something and then everybody laughed and that was it <laughs> since then I so there is an event where I just backed up and didn't want to perform anymore which I loved before and uh 
yeah and it's at the same time something that uh, might be there <laughs> if i didn't have that event so so i don't know And I love to to listen to Heidi or others that just go in front of people and and start singing. Well, I know it's a lot of work, but it's also this rejection, <laughs> the rejection, the the fear of rejection. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> First of all, I wanted to say it seems to me uh, a common theme. Is, uh, I always bring it back to to women to have the self-doubts and also self-sabotage, no? And uh, trying to overcome it. I really resonate with you, Beatrice, uh, because it was for me so. And you say you admire to go on the, uh, and sing for other people. The first time I did that, it was in the church or on the organ uh, empor, no? Very far away, nobody saw me. And I literally, how do you say, put caca in my, my uh, uh, pants, you know? Uh, I mean, that's slowly I convinced myself that I can learn that and I learned that. But I tell you, every time when I uh, started, and late, lately I didn't do any concerts anymore, but when I was short before going on the stage, I said, oh, I will never do that again. I will never do that again, you know? And afterwards is this moment of, ah, I made it, you know, but it's always, uh, how do you say, it's always, it's never really a pleasure. So, or hardly any, what I uh, like to go on stage with people who are positive and who drag you away. And then I can, I can open up and can be the best of myself. But when I do it alone and then always these self-doubts and I know that I'm not as good as I could be. So um, I, I worked a lot my life, but I don't think I have completely overcome that uh, conditioning. Uh, that's not something which you can decide. You can learn and try and do it again and convince yourself. But especially when I hear such a trauma like Gertrude, that somebody is putting you in a situation and you are overwhelmed, I mean, they, they block this, uh, the people without knowing, they block it in a child, probably. I mean, some maybe not, but most of us would be. And then for me, it is an indication that there is a golden shadow for you, from you, by you. I don't know how you say that, in you. Because when you liked something very much and then it's by an event, it gets truncated. I don't know how you say it, cut then it's probably something which you you have in the in the cellar and who wants to come to the light <laughs> uh, the only time i had i was on stage was at uh, the integral forum when i interviewed ken wilber and I wasn't nervous because I know I can speak English. And the amazing thing is probably that I go into a trance. So, um, and this kind of trance is a very easygoing, relaxed person uh, with no problem communicating. And of course I got better every other uh, event and the amazing thing is I, I um, when I try to think about this it was just to uh, it's not necessary to be nervous it's just as you said it's uh, how you are formed how you were formed when you were a child uh, but regarding the golden shadow I don't envy anybody uh usually uh, when you think you should and en be envious i feel sorry for some people like people with lots of money and houses and in so much stress keeping them up and so on so it's the only thing maybe uh i wish i would could already master 
would be to be independent of my desires. Uh, so I don't give in and then feel bad about it. Or when they are not fulfilled, then I feel bad about it. So, but I don't know how you can phrase this as a golden shadow. So uh, what, what would I have to be? What would I have to be able to accomplish? Not to be manipulated by desires. Uh, like <laughs> when I read a book and then I find somebody else mentioned and then I click Amazon and then I order the book and there it is. And uh, so maybe less impatience could be it also, I don't know. I have no idea. I have an idea for you, Monia. You could have taken more leadership and visibility, for instance, in the integral. Uh, you were always behind and writing and, you know, but not, you were there, but you didn't, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, when I, when I started the female field, I became visible, but I also, uh, it's not necessary to be a public, per a public person. It's not my, my way of acting. So I, what I do is, yeah, it's on a, on a different level. It's more on the energy level that I, uh, yeah. Sorry, Christine, I see that you want to speak, but I, I still have to re reply to Monia because I know her for more than 20 years. And I think, yes, the, the, uh, the women's uh, field uh, was good, but it was visible to 20 women, you know. And I know you have these qualities and you could have played a much, much bigger role. And I have the impression, now I'm very frank to say that, that you say, yeah, it's not your way, but that's exactly how we hide our, our golden shadows, I think. You think I should get into politics? <laughs> no, in the, in the, be a, a, a loud voice in the, in, the, in the association, you know, things like that. And you, we left it over to, 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 to many men and to not so reasonable uh, female voices, let's say in this way. <laughs> but what if it's no longer important to you? Because I'm yeah. just now uh, considering how many years do I have to live? And I find more interesting uh, topics for myself than just being a leader. Oh, I find <laughs> <laughs> Talk about 20 years ago or 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah, well, yeah. Christine, you wanted to say something or? Um... Um, I was just uh, thinking about how we can overcome our, our shadow by immersing in the experience and, and kind of cutting off our thinking <laughs> and our analysis <laughs> of things and just uh, be more willing to engage in having an experience and let the experience be whatever it's going to be. So I'm, I'm trying to be more aware of that. And I think integral has helped actually a lot because uh, attending a lot of different meetings and the idea of, of just really kind of showing up um, here has also been that, you know, just having this experience and not trying to overthink it too much. And I think that helps me, you know, uh, release a little bit, whatever that shadow part is that I get away from that. And um, I was remembering back in 2016, uh, we were on the magical mystery tour in Hungary and we were went through the forest in Hungary and Heidi, I'm gonna see if you know what I'm gonna bring up. We went, hiked through the forest and had some meditation time. And then towards the end, we came, we had a fire ceremony. And then at the end, we came upon a chapel out in the forest. It was an amazing little place. And we were the only visitors there. Um, There's probably about 30 of us. And Heidi started to sing in this chapel. 
and the walls were all like thick, thick plaster and um, it just resonated. And everybody was, you know, immobilized by uh, Heidi and, and her song. Um, I'm sure it was probably a, a classical piece, Heidi. I don't know if you remember what you sang, but I think, you know, I, I was wondering how you had the courage just to do that so, so spontaneously. Nobody, you know, knew you were gonna do that or nobody asked you to, but it just came forth. And it, it struck me that probably you were just immersed in the experience of being there and, and you didn't th have to think too much uh, about it. So I, I'm curious to hear what you have to say of your memory. Yeah, sometimes this happens to me, but it's not that it's completely spontaneous. I first have to do a fight with myself. Can I, can I do that? Can I not do that? Can I do that? Can I not do that? Is it too much egocentric? Is it too much blah, 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 blah. And then at a certain point, then it sort of breaks out and then I do it. But it's not that I just do it, you know? It, <laughs> It would be nice, but it's so much the fear that you know you go too much in in in. in. There is also this this desire to be noticed. That's clear, but there's also this really the fear of how oh, how do people see that? Do they think I'm I want to dominate and things like that? That's it's it's not so easy. And so I normally wait if the impulse comes. Also, normally when speaking up in a group of people who I don't know, then I speak only up in this really a thing which is urging, you know, and then I say something. And so it was with the singing too. And it still is if it happens. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I've forgotten. <laughs> I wish we could all think of, you know, um, our golden shadow as more of a gift. And, you know, rather than thinking of what, what might people think or will they judge me about it, I think probably more often than not, people experience what we have to offer as a gift uh, of some sort. Um, but of course, when we're struggling with our own self-doubt, it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> I, I, I was just um, recalling um, an incident where exactly that happened, what, what Heidi was sharing. Uh, when my mother passed away, um, we asked the, the priest to, uh, to put up her favorite songs. They were about Mother Mary somehow. And then there was one song, I don't know, the, the German speaking now, uh, Großer Gott, wir loben dich. Uh, this song was um, like something I had with my mom uh, when there was this, um, I don't know if you know this, when the, the corpse would be um, shown in the, in the community and with lots of flowers and and then we come back to to the to the church, and there, the organ, the whole choir, the whole congregation, and all singing this. And this was a special thing with my mom because the others didn't want to go. And and so I I asked the the priest to do that to to with the organ or in in the chapel. And he said, oh no, for a, for a funeral, it doesn't fit and I don't know what. And then he, he didn't refuse right away, but he didn't do it. I mean, he didn't put the, the number up so, the, so it wasn't sung in the, in the, sung in the, in the chapel. And then when we put her down and I turned to my sister and said, we didn't sing this one. <laughs> and I said, I have to do that. We have to do that. And, and so I, I, I told the, the priest and said, so I'm, I'm going to sing this. Or, and he was flabbergasted and he was not amused and he turned away. So if you think so, something like that. And, and then I started. And my, my voice was clear, really like crystal clear. But my, my legs were trembling so much that my, my sister <laughs> was just holding me from the back. And then the whole 
all the people that were there started or just joined in. And it was, I think if I hadn't done that, I would still regret. And, and this was one of the most powerful um, where I said, yes, I will do it no matter what and no matter what this priest is saying, because I know this is my mother's song. You know, this is the one that needs to be sung. And it was kind of a little bit for me, like the little girl, but it was more like, we cannot do that. This is the song my mother, uh, we sang all the songs before she died, the, the last four days. And, and so it had to be done somehow. So it was really like a mission. <laughs> yeah. So, and I didn't think about what the people might think. I, I just had to do it. Ooh. <laughs> oh, thank you, Gertra. Hello, Victoria. <laughs> do you want to check in and say where your golden shadow is? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I think I left it in the other room. Um, am, am I? <laughs> are you? Um, is it? Has everyone done it except for me? We're just having a conversation. No, Martini is still not. Oh well, can I just wait a second to gather my brains? They're gone at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. Martini, are you around? Can you unmute yourself and say something? Uh, I can see you, but I, um, my laptop says that my camera is not correct. So I can hear you, but not... Um, very clear. It is with an um, um, echo. Yeah, that is because you have two lines open, and so what you um, see is coming in in both. You know. Okay. And what about um, that? I try to turn off the um, the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do I do that? I close it. <laughs> I, oh, I, I have, have problems. Yeah, you figure that out somehow. Yeah, but uh, you go on, and if you don't mind, I am still there. Okay, you just listen. Okay, fine. <laughs> I love the experience of Gertrud because I had some similar um, experiences. Okay, but I I think it is good to talk because it is not clear. Okay. Okay. So now it's up to you, Victoria. Oh, okay. Um, I was trying to fill her in a little bit. <laughs> well, this is sort of cheating, but I still need. <laughs> I'm I'm playing for time. Um, no, I just came from a tap class uh, in New York, and um, it's so fabulous to be in New York, even though I'm not in New York, <laughs> even though it's very early in the morning. But I think it, that is, um, I mean, it's where my head is, but so that's why I'm using it as an example. But I think it's a good example of something that I've loved forever and ever and ever. And I, I even love it more than music, which I don't tell most people because they wouldn't come to my concerts if I told them. <laughs> But um, it's, I don't know what it is. It's something so deep inside of me that I have, I don't know why it's there and where it came from and why it's so important, but it's something that um, my husband recognized. Um, he never knew about it, except when I mentioned, we went, um, when Beatrice was in high school, we went into a dance store to buy her some, some point shoes or something that she needed. And um, we walked past a, a table with tap shoes on it and I almost fainted. I hadn't seen tap shoes in the flesh um, since I was in high school. 
And I was so excited and I said, oh, tap shoes. And then, so then my husband was confused because he didn't know about this. This was like my secret passion. So I told him just a little bit about it. And he said, well, we must buy you some then. And he went over and he, he, um, he knew my shoe size and he just t- took a box and took it to the counter. And I said, no, no, I, I can't dance. I've, you know, I, cause I was, I stopped because I was injured in high school um, uh, doing ballet, ironically. Um, so I hadn't danced and I said, no, I can't dance, I'm injured. And he said, um, he said, well, I, I'm buying you these tap shoes because you reacted like that. And so I took these tap shoes home and put them in my closet and forgot all about them. And then um, years passed. And then um, many years, it was five, five years after he passed away, Beatrice had a scholarship to New York to, um, to do dance education, which is one of her shadows. She's a fantastic teacher. Um, and, and I was, um, she said, I want you to go with me because I'm afraid of New York. And I said, okay, I love New York. So, so we were just packing and we were leaving the next morning at seven in the morning. And um, I suddenly saw a vision of myself sitting endlessly in these dance studios out in the foyer the you know the stage mother waiting for her child and I thought that's just not who I am I can't I'm not going to do that so if I go to New York then I'll just have to go to a museum and she'll have to fend for herself and then suddenly my eye caught these tap shoes which I literally had not opened since they had been purchased and I thought what if I just took them along and you know tried tried to see if maybe I could tap dance now after all these years maybe the maybe the torn ligaments have healed enough that I can do it so I took them and then um, as they say, cause I don't wanna take up too much time, the rest is history. I, um, I took a very beginning, beginning class while Beatrice was taking a, a um, you know, it was, it was, she was in her school, uh, Mark Morris school. And um, they had one beginning tap class there. And so I took it and at, at the end of it, the teacher said, um, she said, I don't, I don't know where you came from and I don't know who you are, but you're in the wrong class. <laughs> And I thought she meant that I was so, you know, retarded and backward that there was nothing, no hope for me. But she said, um, I said, what do you mean? And she said, um, she said, you're way, way too advanced. She said, I don't know why you're here. And so I told her a little bit and she said, she said, oh, you must go to um, Steps on Broadway. And that's the best tap school in New York. And, um, and, you know, that's where the professionals go. And anyway, so that that's the class I just took. Um, it's they they've they've they're offering a few virtual classes, and I even moved to New York for three months um, that same year, back in 2012, just to dance. But everyone everyone was critical of me and said, "What are you doing with it? Are you going to teach tap? Why are you doing it? Are you just doing it to lose weight? If that's the case, why don't you just walk? It's cheaper and less complicated." <laughs> no one ever understood. Um, well, you understood, but I, I knew my husband who of course, unfortunately didn't get to witness this renaissance. Um, I knew that he, he would have t- of course totally have approved and understood. So I just persevered. I thought I have, to, I have to do it no matter what, even if I'm mocked and tarred and feathered and dragged through the streets, it's, it's just in me. And um, yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know what that is, but I'm... <laughs> I'd okay. love to see you dance. I knew you were going to say that, Mama. <laughs> I really, I really would. It's because well, tap dancing is something special, but it's not in me. But I'd love to see you dance. Well, that's the real. That's where the dark shadows come in <laughs> to take over the golden shadow. I. That's still my my difficulty is um, I'm because it's not. You know, I'm, I, I know that what I'm doing is not what I'm thinking I'm doing. It's not, you know, and because I'm a professional musician, it's such a huge, like it's light years away from the skill I have in other things. So take um, it easy, just relax and tap for us. All right, not, <laughs> not this morning, but maybe next Oh, time. no, no, but uh, yeah, time, you, but I really, you tap, I really, you yeah. tap just right. for us. Yeah, just for us. Nobody else. <laughs> what I would well, say I value your opinions more than anyone else's. So <laughs> what I would say next time you come to Europe, also Hanalei comes to Europe, and then we meet in my house and then we do a huge session. Everybody 
exp ex not explode exposes their shadows. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm happy to. We do will that. have a lot of fun. Yeah. And you too, <laughs> certainly, Christine. <laughs> but when you come to, you have to to use the ticket from Hungary, you know. So. <laughs> no, that would be great. You know, the the place would be here to to be able to do that. So. But I wanted to say that's actually exactly the best example we, we got today from Golden Shadow and that you also realized it to get it out of the darkness of the hidden place and you you realized it in the in the in the open world in the first step and the second is to make yourself shown with that you know at the beginning we were talking about the the difficulty to be visible, no? what we women often have, and the struggle be between being visible. So that fits into that too. And we all have to overcome these. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, but maybe we can also encourage each other. No? <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So we heard something about you, Beatrice. That the 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 teacher is not only in the in the black shadow, but it's already <laughs> going towards gold. <laughs> Christine, I love what you said about experience, <clears throat> being the experience, and don't think about it. I think that's the most natural way for that golden shadow to come out and to play, and not to make it so serious. Because when you were speaking about it, Christine, I could feel it. It was just like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, enough talking. And I, I now remember a, a beautiful German friend of mine. I did an online journey with him a few years ago. And in 2015, and he asked me, when did you stop singing? And I was looking at, because we, we got, we were in this, I was in the European hub, because I'm from South Africa because there was nobody here doing that. And we would get together every week. And then the one day he just said to me, when did you stop singing? And that evening, 11 o'clock, he sent me a message on my phone. He said, you're going to sing for me now. And we had a Zoom and I would remember to the minute when I really stopped singing, exactly to the minute. And I was still singing in bright eyes. And he said to me when I was singing it, he said, You'll never sing it like you sang it as a young, you know, as a teenager. This was very different um, because it's actually a sad song. And he said, you will sing more joyful things now. And Lacey Soul was an incredible experience because it was unplanned and in the, on the spur of the moment. And I now feel it in my legs as well, which is good. As you are talking about experience, I have a, a, a meditation from June, Jane Houston, um, uh, which I could do with you if you want to do that. The last 20, 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah. Stepping into your, it, it would be in uh, standing and making steps, but maybe you can just move your, your body to, to, to do that then. So I would then. like to, to say one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, when Christine said that, it was like, I think that is what flow is about. Like, or, or the 100% the, um, play and it more than 69% uh, seriousness. It, it's really like to, to, to be in that flow. And when, you, when we are there, we just do what, What's, it, what's emerging and not thinking about what the others might think or so. And I just remembered I had 10 years of uh, recorder uh, lessons and five years of piano lessons and stopped because my teacher was so blah at the end. So uh, yeah, just do it. <laughs> In, in maybe it's it's really becoming it, or being in flow and then just do it. Not from this 
you have to. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I needed to say. Go ahead, Heidi. Okay, so I invite you to close your eyes. And you had already an, a little bit of an idea what your uh, shadow might be. But apart from that, you now look ahead of you. And there you see a woman. And she is doing or having this part which you saw which is your golden shadow and which is not yet developed. And you see it in her. You see it in her, in her attitude. You see it in her, how she is dressed, how she is moving, what she is doing. And you, you observe her a little bit. How would this woman be? She is not you. She is a woman out there about 10 meters, 20 meters. You see it on the stage. You see her on the stage. And then if you notice that there is still some something which is not perfect, which is, you think that would be better. So you just allow her to, to, to fix that, to move even better, to be, you know, have another expression, another em emanation as you think would be the ideal one, the best one, which uh, corresponds to all your desires to all your ideas how that should be she mustn't be a performer but now she is like on a stage so you can see her and she is exposing her qualities and you just adjust it and you make it in an ideal way so that she is really even if you don't believe that ideal figures exist, but you just do it anyway. It's absolutely ideal. And if it's saturated, no problem. It's that woman there, which you can dress with all the golden shadows possible. And then when you have depicted her made her in this way, she's still distant. You just go a little nearer to her. Maybe now you can hear what she says and see if she says the right words and with the right voice and with the right melody, whatever. And if not, you adjust that. You have the power to adjust that. And then you go even nearer, now you are maybe three meters and you are able to, you know, to smell. Maybe she has a good perfume or something, you know. You can really discern how her hair is and how the texture of her, her dresses are. You can almost touch it, but still you see it. You imagine how it would be to touch that and to come near this woman. You, you feel attracted to this woman. And if there is still something which is not ideal, you, you still have the power to adjust that. And then you feel the attraction. She's calling you. And you go nearer. And even nearer. And now you can already touch her dress very timidly and see how it is, feels like and touch her skin, maybe her hand, you shake hands or you just touch her. Oh, and you feel the attraction. You feel the light which is coming from her and the warmth and the welcoming energy. And now you embrace her and she is embracing you. And then you do another step and you are melting into her. And now you feel how you feel in that moment when you have become her.
and enjoy that as long as you like to enjoy that. And when we open our eyes afterwards, you take that with you, the feeling of being her, your ideal self. And when you ever you feel like it, you can come back. Normally it takes much longer and slower and with steps, physical steps, which is much more impressive because you really, when you start to melt with her. And before we say goodbye, I would love to hear how that was for you, even if it was only a taste. Maybe we put it into our check out. All right, I start. All of a sudden, there's a melody in me. It's uh, I'm dancing in the rain. Uh, so just to be happy with what is probably is the golden channel. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. It's for me a very sensitive experience. And yeah, no words needed, but thank you. Feeling it all over. I wasn't sure what um, attributes I wanted this woman to have. Um, and so rather than standing on a stage where I put her originally, then I had her just sitting down in like a armchair or something like that. And when she did that, then it just came to me that it was more of a feeling as opposed to a, a trait or a characteristic. It was just more of a feeling of peace uh, and acceptance. And then at the end, as we were getting closer, I just decided I would sit in her lap. <laughs> so I sat in her lap and then uh, in that way could just kind of melt into her. So um, that was my experience uh, and I enjoyed it. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. And the question, how was this melting moment? It felt good. It felt peaceful and accepting. It did. Yeah. For me, it was a shivering moment, like, <laughs> um, and I could really feel it. And I had similar to Christine at the beginning, what is it that she has and I don't or something like that. So I was kind of in my head, but then, um, she was on stage like, um, in a cabaret or so. So there was a lot of humor in there. And I'm more the sincere type. <laughs> so yeah, just humor bubbling up. 
that that was and and she was kind of playing a piano <laughs> the flute singing whatever so not not so big audience but just for the joy of it so and and that was yeah it was great i really loved it so yeah it's here now thank you heidi and it it's been a nice hour to share with you including the tap dance. Is that a cue? I think that's your cue. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I'm in such a strange space this morning. Um, I found myself that I, I saw sort of idealized, I saw people that I had admired all through my life and, and I was trying to like make them all merge together. I think I did the assignment wrong, but <laughs> Um, but when you said that, that, that maybe she had this smell, all of a sudden it turned into a person that I thought I didn't even like, that I um, worked with for many years in Vienna because she had this amazing perfume. I don't know what it was, but you could smell it miles away. And um, I suddenly found myself drawn into this. And I thought about her a little bit, how she was a, a woman that it didn't matter what happened in her life, she was always sovereign and in control and in command. And she always looked beautiful, even if you caught her like when she woke up. And she wasn't a beautiful woman at all. She was actually, <laughs> but she looked beautiful because she felt she exuded this kind of, I don't know, charisma. And then, but then it went into, like at the end, it was a mixture of Ann Miller. I don't know if you know Ann Miller, the, the, um, <laughs> the, the great singer, dancer, tap dancer. Um, and who's totally flamboyant and charismatic and, and funny. Yeah, the humor that Gertrude said. Um, and then it turned into the Virgin Mary. So I don't know, <laughs> this is not something I would tell a priest <laughs> because- <laughs> Ann Miller, the Virgin because Mary. Because they, they, I tried to get them together and, and in a weird way, they, they came together. It was because because the, the the closer I got, it started to feel like the I was still Ann Miller, but or I was a, I was melding into this beautiful yellow dress. And then I, um, as we merged, it felt like the visitation between Mary and Elizabeth in Scripture and all the paintings of that. And so as I merged with her, all of a sudden, I was startled to see that I had sort of merged with the Virgin Mary. And then I thought that's that's like so complicated i have to think about that tomorrow <laughs> it's too much for me today what was yours well i i had a similar uh, like christine i kept she was like a, a well it's interesting my mother will think this is interesting she was she was kind of like a chameleon because she kept changing her outfit kept changing and her haircut kept changing and everything there was this this constant shifting um, and even when I got closer and thought I'd settled her down, it would be different again and again and again. Um, but the one thing that remained the same throughout was she was, it was the way she stood, which was completely grounded and confident and present, but also with like a kind of floating quality. Like she was totally on the earth but also she was kind of ethereal or something and but 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 very upright and very like she knew she would totally knew who she was and knew her space and there was there was nothing nothing would yeah nothing could could shift that um and then i don't know if it's because we've been talking about golden shadows but when i got really close she was wearing something kind of golden and shimmery which i would never like in a thousand years wear um but she was wearing it and it was beautiful. Um, and, and, and her skin was just totally smooth and white. Um, I had a Virgin Mary, she was a Virgin Mary for a moment too. Not, not when I got close to her, but in one of the shiftings, um, there was some weird, I had the sense that there was something spiritual about her. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
that was it was an interesting experience. <laughs> and how did you feel when you were merging? I it was very brief, but I but for a moment I got to inhabit that the that stand that yeah, the physicality of the the confidence and also the lightness. It's just like light grounding. Very good. Thank you. Now, Martini, uh, are you still here? Okay. I try. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was very interesting because I approach in my teaching uh, to um, draw or paint um, a model. So becoming one with the model. And this was a very, I needed, I didn't need to say anything, but give them the um, confidence to do it. And to experience also if the person was not nice or beautiful or a man, but and most of the time they were naked and they were so surprised how beautiful man is. And I, I had the, the um, experience what I didn't hear you very well, Heidi, but I thought that it was the same experience with drawing this person. And becoming one and this is the beautifulest thing and we all are one yeah and and uh, to to be a, a virgin or a, a queen or whatever or a, a, a man of the street who is um, um, being a model is this, this the same happens do you understand me I think so, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. So I'm glad that we talked about experience and that we could end uh, our three-part shadow session with an experience. And, then, and how about you? Yeah, I didn't do that. When I guide it, I, I don't, I cannot do that. You know, that's, it's just not, not possible. But I'm really happy that uh, how it went, our, our sessions. And thank you. And we will meet the next time. And afterwards, I stop the recording and we think about what we will do next. Okay. So for the people who are watching, if you want to join us, contact us and we will have all sorts of topics. This time it was the shadow, the dark shadow and the golden shadow. Okay, ciao, ciao, bye-bye. <laughs>